It's 3 a.m. Production has ground to a halt. The PLC is running fine, the HMI shows all green, but nothing's communicating properly with your SCADA system. The plant manager is calling every five minutes, and you're wondering how so many pieces that work perfectly in isolation can fail so spectacularly as a system. Sound familiar? I'm Alana, and after 35 years of solving these exact nightmares, I can tell you the number one issue isn't faulty equipment, it's poor integration. Today, I'm pulling back the curtain on how PLCs actually integrate into larger industrial systems. Not the sanitized version from the manufacturer's manual, but the real-world approach that keeps production running when everything wants to fail. Whether you're troubleshooting a communication breakdown right now or designing a system you hope never fails, the next 10 minutes might just save your career. If you've ever stood in front of a complex automation system, wondering how information flows from one component to another, or struggled to get devices from different manufacturers to play nice together, this video is for you. Let's dive in. Before we see how PLCs fit into the bigger picture, let's quickly remind ourselves what they actually do. Programmable logic controllers are essentially industrial computers that take in signals from input devices, run a program, and then control output devices based on that program. Think of a PLC as the brain of your machine or process. It's taking in information from sensors, switches, and other input devices, making decisions based on its programming, and then controlling motors, valves, and other equipment. Now, one thing I always stress to new technicians is this. A PLC by itself is just one component. The real power comes from how we integrate it with everything else in a facility. The easiest way to understand how PLCs fit into industrial automation is to look at what we call the automation pyramid. This gives us a high-level view of how information flows in a modern facility. At the bottom level, we have our field devices, sensors, motors, actuators, and instruments. These connect directly to our PLCs, which sit at the control level. Above that, we have supervisory systems like SCADA or HMI networks then Manufacturing Execution Systems, MES, and finally Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP, at the top. What's critical to understand is that information flows both up and down this pyramid. Production data flows up, while commands and set points flow down. And guess what's sitting at that crucial middle layer managing most of that communication? That's right, our PLCs. Here's something I learned the hard way over the decades. When troubleshooting integration issues, always follow the data flow. Is it a problem going up the pyramid or down? This simple approach has saved me countless hours of headaches. Let's talk about physical integration first, how PLCs actually connect to all these other devices. Traditional PLCs connect to field devices through I.O. modules. These could be digital I.O. handling simple on-off signals, analog I.O. for continuous values like temperature or pressure, or specialized modules for particular devices or protocols. The physical connections might be hardwired using various standards, 24 DC volts, 120 AC volts, 4 to 20 milliamp current loops, 0 to 10 volt signals, thermocouple inputs, or RTD connections. Each has its place and purpose. But modern automation goes way beyond simple I.O. Most PLCs today come equipped with multiple communication ports supporting various industrial protocols. You'll commonly see Ethernet ports for protocols like Ethernet, IP, Modbus TCP, or Profinet. Serial ports might support Modbus RTU, DF1, or other proprietary protocols. And don't forget field bus networks like DeviceNet, Profibus, or Foundation Fieldbus. A tip from my field experience. When designing new systems, think carefully about your communication architecture. I've seen too many plants with a hodgepodge of protocols that become maintenance nightmares. Standardize where possible and document extensively where you can't. Now let's look at how PLCs typically fit into the network architecture of a modern facility. In most modern facilities, you'll find some version of this layout. At the control level, PLCs connect to each other and to SCADA systems over an industrial Ethernet network. This control network is typically segmented from the business network for both security and reliability reasons. P 
PLCs in this network architecture serve several critical functions. They handle real-time control tasks, buffer data from field devices, and translate between different protocols and systems. The network infrastructure itself is specialized too. These aren't your office-grade Ethernet switches. Industrial-grade networking equipment is designed to withstand harsh environments and electromagnetic interference and provide deterministic performance. One crucial mistake I see repeatedly is treating industrial networks like IT networks. Industrial networks have fundamentally different requirements. They prioritize determinism and reliability over raw throughput. A one second network hiccup might be fine for your email, but it could shut down an entire production line when it happens to your control system. PLCs don't exist in isolation. They need to share information with higher level systems like HMI, SCADA, MES, and occasionally even ERP systems. At the most basic level, PLCs integrate with Human Machine Interfaces, or HMIs. These provide operators with visualization of the process and simple control capabilities. The integration here is typically direct. The HMI software communicates directly with the PLC using native drivers. Moving up a level, SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition systems integrate with multiple PLCs to provide facility-wide monitoring and control. This is where we start collecting data for historical trending, alarming, and reporting. OPC UA has become the gold standard for this kind of vertical integration. It provides a secure, reliable way for different systems to exchange data, regardless of vendor or platform. A practical insight from the field. When setting up PLC tags that will be exposed to higher level systems, create a dedicated set of interface tags. Don't expose your entire program. This creates a clean separation that makes system changes much easier down the road. Let's talk about some real world challenges you'll face when integrating PLCs into larger systems. First up is dealing with legacy equipment. Most facilities are a mix of technologies from different decades. You might need to integrate a brand new PLC with a machine from the 1980s. In these cases, I often use protocol converters or specialized I.O. cards as bridges between technologies. Another common challenge is multi-vendor integration. Maybe you've got Allen Bradley PLCs in one area, Siemens in another, and Modicon in yet another. Getting these to talk seamlessly requires understanding the nuances of each platform's communication capabilities. Data mapping becomes critically important here. You need to carefully plan which PLC has what information, how it's represented, and how it will be shared. Consistent data types and addressing schemes save enormous headaches down the road. When direct integration isn't possible, protocol gateways and industrial IoT edge devices can bridge the gap. These specialized devices can translate between protocols, buffer data, and even provide basic processing capabilities. And never forget cybersecurity. As we connect our PLCs to more systems, we increase potential vulnerabilities. Defense in depth, proper network segmentation, and careful access control are essential practices. Integrating PLCs into larger automation systems is equal parts science and art. The technical aspects matter, certainly. Protocols, networks, and interfaces. But equally important is the strategic thinking about information flow, maintainability, and future expansion. If there's one piece of advice I can leave you with after 35 years in the field, it's this. Document everything about your integration, how systems connect, what data is shared, protocol details, IP addresses, all of it. The person who will thank you most might be your future self when you're troubleshooting at 3 a.m. Remember, PLCs are the crucial middle layer in the automation pyramid. Both physical and logical integration need careful planning, standardized protocols where possible, create clean interfaces between system levels, document everything thoroughly. If you found this overview helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more practical control insights. In the comments, let me know what specific integration challenges you're facing in your facility. I read every comment and use them to plan future videos. Until next time, this is Scada and Beyond with Alana. Thanks for watching.